Okay, I think it's time to continue. Uh, let me introduce our next speaker, Sarajah, who will be talking about rational points and certain super elliptic curves. Hey, please. <clears throat> First and foremost, I would like to uh, wish Balu many, many happy returns of the day. Uh, I like to thank the organizers also for bringing all of us in line on this uh, uh, online platform. Okay. Just one second. Yeah, just to use the scroller. scroller. So I'm going to call this uh, Adder Selfridge Super Elliptic Curse. You will soon see the reason for that in a few minutes. Um, in 2016, Bennett and Sixek considered rational solutions of x plus one into x plus two up to x plus k equal to y power l in x and y in rational numbers x and y with k greater than equal to two. There are at least two products on the left hand side and l greater than equal to two a prime. So we always assume in this talk that L is a prime. They showed that if this equation holds, then L is bounded by e power three power k. And um, this can be considered as a rational analog to the classical shinzel tideman theorem, a very famous theorem in transcendental number theory. So here is the result of Schindler and Tideman from 1976. So consider fx equal to y power l, where fx is a polynomial with rational integral coefficients and with at least two distinct roots. Suppose the above equation has integral solutions in x and mod y greater than one then L is bounded by a computable number depending only on F. By this dependence, I mean it may depend on the coefficients or the degree of F, anything connected with F. Okay. Bennett and 6x result that I mentioned earlier uh, deals with the rational solutions when Fx is the polynomial x plus one up to x plus k. So there are um, some trivial solutions to this equation, x plus one to x plus k equal to y power l. So this, uh, then by number one, I mean this equation, x plus one to x plus k equal to y power l. So it admits number of obvious rational points with y equal to zero, only minus one, minus two, minus k and also two infinite families of solutions given by x, y, k, l equal to a square by b square minus a square, a, b by b square minus a square, k equal to two, l equal to two, and a not equal to plus minus b. And there is another family, x equal to one minus two, b by two, y is plus minus one by two power g into product i equal to one to g of two i minus one, and k is two j, l is two. So these are solutions coming when l is equal to two, and here a, b, and j are integers with the g positive. There are two other solutions for this equation given by x, y, k, l equal to minus four by three, two by three, k equal to three, l equal to three. So it is a cubic now, minus two by three, minus two by three, three and three. And it is conjectured that there is no solution with l greater than or equal to four. So you see that the solution, these solutions occur when l is two, l is two, and in this case, l is three. So apart from these solutions, it is conjectured that there is no solution with L greater than equal to four. And this conjecture is now known 
for k less than or equal to 34 by the works of uh, several mathematicians. I will come to this um, a little later also. <clears throat> Here is a joint work with uh, Pranabesh Das and uh, Shanta Laishram from 2018. <clears throat> you consider this curve x plus one into x plus two, et cetera, to x plus i minus one, to x plus i plus one, et cetera, to equal to y bar l. So this curve is nothing but the original curve that I started with, except that there is one term missing here, x plus i, okay? And i varies now from one to k. So this one curve when i varies from one to k is going to give me k, uh, k such curves, okay? And when I equal to one, the end points, I equal to one or I equal to K, we are again back into that uh, equation that I started with, because with uh, K replaced by K minus one. So again, the bound for L, the, this exponent L is going to be valid in these cases. So we will consider I varying from two to K minus one. So our result is the following. <clears throat> when rational solutions for this equation with one term missing exist, what happens? So let PK be the least prime greater than or equal to K by two. Then be sure that this equation, three is the equation with one term missing. Uh, so when this equation is valid with I varying from two to K minus PK, or I varying from PK to K. So I should lie either on the left, left side or on the right side of the product. Then two holes, two is the bound for L, namely L is bounded by E power three power K. When K equal to two Q, in particular, when where Q is a prime, then you have this, the least prime greater than or equal to k by two is exactly equal to q, okay? So we get the following corollary. So let equation three be valid with k equal to two q, where q is a prime, then two holes. Because this condition that uh, i has to lie between these two, uh, this corner or that corner, it is valid <clears throat> in this case. And uh, so the bound for L holds. So the condition on I that it should be uh, between two and K minus PK or PK and K, that has been removed subsequently after our work by Edis. And in 2019, I considered uh, this equation with more terms missing. And in particular, I showed that if two terms were missing, then again, the bound for L less, that is L less than or equal to E power P power K holds. So let me um, show you how we proceed from this uh, equation having rational solutions to equations which are in arithmetic progression. So let us assume that L is greater than K. This is not a very serious assumption, because our aim is to show that if there exists a rational solution, then L is uh, bounded by some function of K. In fact, what we are at present having is a double exponential. So we can as well assume L is greater than K then write your x as n by s and y as m by t with m not equal to zero. I'm not looking for uh, y equal to zero solutions. And s and t, the denominator is positive. And the GCD of n and s is equal to one. GCD of m and t is equal to one. Okay, we can always write rational solutions like this then equation one can be rewritten as n plus s, et cetera, n plus ks, 
equal to s power k into n power l by t power. And since the left hand side is an integer, this is an integer now. So this has to be an integer, but m and t are co prime. So t by l has to divide s by k. But we have also assumed the GCD of n and s to one. So that gives you that s power k is actually equal to t power. So as l is a prime, using this assumption that l is greater than k, there is a positive integer d such that s is d power l and t is d power k. And in fact, uh, this assumption can be relaxed and you can see that the same conclusion that s is d power l, t is d power k, you can have even under the assumption that the GCD of L and K is one, okay? So, so you see that here is a, uh, the, our equation, the original equation we have transformed into a product in arithmetic progression. These two cancel, so it is equal to M power L. So we have a, an equation of this form now z into z plus t, et cetera, z plus t minus one into t is equal to m power l, where z is now an integer, the GCD of z and d is one, and this capital D is equal to d power l. It's a perfect l power. So this delta, the product, is a product of k terms in arithmetic progression. So any solution to this equation with d equal to d power l will give rise to a rational solution to our original. So now by the results of Bennett, Giori, Haidu, and Pinter, it is now known that such an equation where one side is a product of terms from an arithmetic progression, when is it a perfect l -th power? This is now known, and in turn, the, our, the equation I started with has no rational solution if three less than or equal to k less than or equal to 34. So this is the result that I mentioned in the beginning. These are the mathematicians who worked on that. And L greater than or equal to five. So let me now, uh, so please remember this equation. So a product of uh, k terms in arithmetic progression, whether it is a perfect power or not, that's what we are looking for. Let me go to some old results on this equation. <clears throat> Let us restrict ourselves to z greater than or equal to one in phi. So I'm looking for only positive integer solutions uh, for the equation, okay? And, uh, <clears throat> Here comes a very remarkable result of Erdős and Selfridge from 1975 that this equation phi with k greater than or equal to two and d equal to one has no solution. That means a product of two or more consecutive positive integers is never a perfect power. So. This is why we call this uh, uh, curve also adder selfridge curve. Their work uh, opened a Pandora's box, and since 1975, several uh, mathematicians have worked on this uh, equation, the variations and extensions of this. Okay, so this adder selfridge theorem then tells us that the curve one that I started with has no positive integral solution. So let us now consider the greater than one. Here, Erdős has a conjecture that this equation where one side is a product of terms in arithmetic progression with D, the common uh, difference greater than one, uh, implies that K is bounded by an absolute so when k is bounded, then uh, 
of course, L will also be bounded by an absolute constant by the uh, result two. That is, L is less than e power three power k, so L is also bounded. This conjecture of Erdős is known under ABC conjecture by a result of Shore for L greater than equal to. And as I said, several mathematicians have worked on this uh, kind of equation. There are variations and extensions of this equation. And there are uh, nice uh, expository articles by Shore and people those who are interested may refer to them. Okay, so, but for this lecture, I'm going to state one or two results from these old results. <clears throat> so let us write this D as D1 into D2, where D1 is the maximal divisor of D such that every prime divisor of D1 is congruent to one mod L. Okay, so then the every prime divisor of D2 is incongruent to one mod L and the GCD of D1 and D2. We shall call this D1 as the L part of D. So the primes here are all congruent to one mod L. And in 2001, myself and Shore, we showed that this D1 has to be greater than one for k greater than equal to four. K refers to the length of the product and L greater than equal to three. So for cubes and higher powers, this T1 has to be greater than one. Thus, you see that D1 is, um, it has, it, all its prime devices are congruent to one model. So it has to be at least seven, implying that the, this equation in arithmetic progression equal to a perfect power uh, does not hold if D is of the form two power A, three power B, five power C. So it has to have a prime greater than equal to seven, okay? <clears throat> so what is the implication of this for the equation when you consider it as a curve and looking for rational solutions? So then one, the, our original curve that I started with has no positive rational solutions in X and Y, whose denominators are composed of only two, three, and five. Okay. In fact, the, about this D1, uh, here I said it can't be of the form two power A, three power B, five power C, D1, is just greater than one we have said here, uh, but <clears throat> uh, we can find lower bounds for D1 and hence of course for D, depending on K and L, okay? So improving upon uh, uh, our older, is my older results with Shore, I could recently show for instance that D is greater than or equal to D1, is greater than or equal to one over L, K power L minus seven by L power one fourth minus seven by L power three fourth for L greater than or equal to 17. So you can easily see that as L and K increase, the lower bound for D also increases. For instance, if K is greater than or equal to 35 and L is greater than or equal to 27, we get D as big as 10 power 16. So if an equation um, like that with a, a product of K terms in arithmetic progression should be an L power, then this says that the common difference has to be so large. Okay. So we conclude that therefore, the, our equation one has a positive rational solution in X and Y. If it has, then either the denominators of X and Y exceed 10 power 16, or L has to be less than or equal to maximum of 20, because for L greater or equal to 27, I have said, and L is the prime. So L has to be less than or equal to 23 and K. 
So this K is coming by from the very assumption that I have assumed in the very beginning that L is greater than K so that I can transform this equation to an equation in arithmetic. So this is the implication of results of this type on uh, equations in arithmetic progression being a perfect power on this rational solutions for the curve. And here you see that the bound for L is linear. So it is less linear in K, where we had the bound for L as double exponential, e power, e power, k. Let me state one more result here. This is uh, from 1990 due to Shorian and So suppose K is sufficiently large, then the equation phi with D greater than one and P delta greater than K. P delta means uh, the greatest prime factor of this product. Uh, z into z plus d, etc. z plus k minus one in k. So the greatest prime factor greater than k implies that there exists a computable absolute constant c such that l power omega d is less than or equal to c times k log log k by log k, where this omega d is, d is the number of uh, distinct prime devices of Okay. So here you see the bound that they have got for L power omega D and omega D is greater than or equal to one. So this is a bound for L itself. So L is less than or equal to C times K times log log K by log K, which is very good. Okay. So you can view, but of course here K is very, has to be taken very large. So you can view this uh, result of Shuri and Tideman as uh, being restrictive on K, but they get a very good bound on L, whereas the new results are less restrictive on K at the cost of the bound for L. Okay, <clears throat> so these are some general results um, on this equation. Now let me uh, go to some small values of k when the length of the product is small. And in these cases, for many small values of k, one tries to solve the uh, equation completely. In 1999, Sander and 2003, Lakal and Sander, they completely solved this uh, one for k equal to three, four, and five. And in 2006, Bennett, Brian, Dury, and Haidu, they solved one for k less than or equal to 11. And Dury, Haidu, Pinter, in 2009, they solved one for k less than or equal to 34. Okay. So let me now present a new result. <clears throat> So in a recent work, um, we consider this three, equation three, that is the equation with one term missing. So x plus one to x plus i minus one, x plus i plus one to x plus i, i power l, or three less than or equal to k, less than or equal to eight, and one less than or equal to i, less than or equal to k. So this is the result uh, joined with uh, Pranabesh Das, Shanta Alaishram myself, and Divyam Sharma. Um, we have almost completed it. We just need to give another reading. <clears throat> okay. So let K be equal to three, all solutions of three, three is, is this equation, are given by k equal to three, l equal to two, i equal to two. So when k is three, it is just um, x plus one and I'm omitting i equal to two term. So x plus one into x plus uh, three um, equal to a square, l equal to two, it's a square. So it will lead to some Pythagorean <coughs> type of uh, equation. 
equations and one can solve it and you get some parametric solutions like this. And there is another k equal to 3l equal to 2, i equal to 2, there are uh, these type of solutions also. So here r and s are co-prime integers, r greater than s greater than 0, and they are of opposite parity. So this is uh, for k equal to 3. So now we go to k equal to 4. <clears throat> Here, in this case, when L is 3 and I equal to 2. So this is the curve x plus 1 into x plus 3 into x plus 4 equal to y cube. That is the curve. So here we are, we are able to say that if there is a solution, then each term is a perfect cube. We are not able to rule out this possibility. So this is the result for k equal to 4. When k equal to 5, l equal to 2, i equal to 2. So again, you notice that this is a cubic case. Here again is the square case. There are infinitely many solutions in this case. And some non-trivial solutions are listed here. Look at it. And k equal to 7, l equal to 2, i equal to 2 again. You have one solution, x, y, given by minus 37 by 7 plus minus 2 power 4 into p cube into 5 by 7. So apart from these solutions that we have listed here, for all other values of k, with k lying between 3 and 8, i lying between 1 and k, and l greater than or equal to 2, the equation 3 has no rational solution. So we could solve it completely for 3 up to 8 with one term missing. So let me now give some important ingredients that go into uh, this uh, result. <clears throat> so just as I explained for the uh, curve with all terms present, same way you can convert the curve with one term missing into a product in arithmetic progression with one term missing like this. So z into z plus d up to z plus i minus one into d. z plus i plus one d up to z plus k minus one d will be now a perfect LF power. Okay. <clears throat> so first we observe by mirror image that i can be taken to be less than or equal to k i. In the very first half we can take. The result will be similar if I take it in the other parts. And I not equal to Z. This, these uh, are already done. Thus, every equation gives rise to K by 2 minus 1 equations as I varies. So here itself, the difficulty starts from considering all the product and with, with one term missing because the missing term that can vary from here, this end to this end. So it gives rise, one equation gives rise to several equations. And it can be seen that each term is almost an Lth power. If I take a particular term here, Z plus Rd, you can write it as AR into XR power L with the greatest prime factor of AR less than K. <clears throat> this is because by this equation, the length of this product is only K. So any prime greater than or equal to K can divide at the most one term here. And by this equation, it has to divide that term to an Lth power. So the primes which 
appear not to an Lth power can only be primes less than k. Okay, so I can write z plus every term here like ar into xr or l with the greatest prime factor of ar less than k. Okay, so your main task is to form suitable ternary equations of signature LLL or LL2 with L greater than three and apply modularity methods to show that these equations have no non-trivial solution. So how do we form uh, LLL uh, equations? So you observe that given any three distinct terms from the product, say z plus qd, z plus rd, z plus st, we can find relatively prime non-zero integers, lambda q, lambda r, lambda s, for which you can get an identity like this, lambda q into z plus qd plus lambda r into z plus rd equal to lambda s into z plus st. It's like, just like if you have um, x plus one, x plus two, x plus three, then x plus one plus x plus three is twice x plus two. It, and uh, with some more uh, calculations, you can always find for any three terms like this, okay? So now you put A as, capital A as, lambda Q into A, because I have written this as AQ into XQ power L, this says AR into XR power L, this as AS into X, uh, XS power L. So you just put A equal to lambda Q AQ, B as lambda R AR, C as lambda S AS, and UV Z as XQ XR XS. Then you have the equation A U power L plus B V power L equal to C Z power L. And we have some control over the coefficients also, the P of A, B, C, the greatest prime factor of these coefficients is less than K. So this is a ternary equation of signature LLN, okay? Now for the signature LL2, uh, this is useful when we deal with the large values of L. If P, Q, R, and S are all integers not equal to I because that I, I term is omitted. So we have to choose not equal to I with zero less than or equal to P, less than Q, less than or equal to R, less than S, less than or equal to K minus one. And this is the important condition here. P plus S equal to Q plus R. Then, I take this product z plus qd into z plus rd minus z plus pd into z plus sd. This turns out to be qr minus ps into d square, which is not zero. <clears throat> this leads to a ternary equation of the form a u power l d v power l equal to c z square because d square comes here with the greatest prime factor of A, B less than K. <clears throat> the, with the, and the signature of this is LL2, okay? Now, let me uh, say the case when the GCD of L and K minus one equal to one. I already told you that we need not uh, assume L greater than K, even when you, even if you have this relaxed condition, GCD of L and K minus one is one, then um, your common difference is going to be an LF power, okay? And in this case, we can treat the about ternary equation. That is the equation that I got here. So this Z is nothing but D, but it is now D power L. So it is d power 2L I'm getting on the, on the uh, right-hand side. So I can, I can treat it as a, an equation with signature LLL or LL2, okay? And um, also in that case, I do not need three terms to form such an LLL equation. Even with, if I 
say two equations and subtract them, it is going to give rise to an LLL equation. And that because you can just take the difference and I get this, okay? And this gives us more freedom in forming ternary equations. And in fact, we can show this result. So if, the, if our equation holds, then, uh, and if it has a rational solution for four less than or equal to K less than or equal to eight, then GCD of L and K minus one has to be greater than one. If it is equal to one, then it has no rational solution that which we can do. Okay, let me now say about the modular approach here. <clears throat> so since K, we have restricted ourselves to K less than or equal to eight, we know that we can form ternary equations with the greatest prime factor of ABC, the coefficients less than or equal to seven. And we need to juggle among the terms, use combinatorial arguments, and form suitable equations so that mod modularity methods can be applied. And plenty of results are available on such generalized Fermat type equations. For L greater than or equal to 11, we were able to apply uh, results which are available in literature already. For L equal to seven, we came across several new equations. I shall explain with uh, one example. For instance, you consider A x power seven plus B y power seven equal to C z power seven. And A, B, C, X, Y, Z non-zero integers, A, X, B, Y, C, Z co prime, and 43 dividing X, Y, Z. And let us also assume that A, B, C is of this form, two power four, three power beta, five power gamma, seven power beta, and seven naught dividing beta gamma delta. So I'm just giving one instance where we had to really uh, do the calculations and get rid of it. <clears throat> so suppose X, Y, Z is a solution to this equation. We form the Fry curve fy square equal to x into x minus a x power seven, x plus b y power seven. The radical, um, uh, this, this rad two means uh, product of odd prime devices of a, b, c. It is 105 in our case. And by Ribet's lower, uh, level lowering, the conductor n e of this curve e is two power t into 105, the t. One. So Yanni is 105 and or 210. I'll just explain the case 105. So these are standard procedures. The, um, there is, <clears throat> it is known that the Galois representation coming from the action of GQ on the L torsion points, EL, it arises from a new form F of weight two and trivial Neben type of character with level N E. So let us do this calculation for n e equal to 105. The dimension of f is 2, and the Fourier coefficients of this uh, new form, let them be cn in a number field kf. Okay? And it turns out that c43, but I'm going to choose the prime p as 43, c43 as 4 or 4 root 5. Okay? And this is well known. These are all well known facts, in fact, for experts. <clears throat> Suppose P divides X, Y, Z. The Fry curve has a multiplicative reduction at P. And also, if P does not divide L into N, then we get a trace at the Frobenius as plus minus P plus one. So the norm of CP plus minus P plus one is congruent to zero mod L. So now you choose your P as 43, L as seven, and N E as 105. Then we get seven divides <clears throat> this norm. Okay. This gives seven divides 48 or minus 40. In this case, C43 equal to four, or it divides 44 square minus eight. And that is a contradiction. Okay. 
and for n equal to 210, it is similar, but uh, a little more work is. So here we have taken all our data from William Stein's database called LMFTB, the L functions and modular form database. <clears throat> so that is for the case L equal to seven. The case L equal to three, we use an old result of Selma on cubic equations of the form x cubed plus ay cubed plus bz cubed equals zero. It's a beautiful long paper by Selma. And he has tabulated uh, the solutions for these type of equations for various values of a. So with the help of that result, we could ex explore various possibilities. Now the case L equal to two, <clears throat> I'm going to explain with the three examples. Um, so let K equal to four, I equal to two. We have the curve as X plus one into X plus three into X plus four equal to Y squared. Okay, this is the curve. And this is an elliptic curve of rank zero and the torsion points belong to Z2 cross Z2, leading to the only solution with Y equal to Z. Okay. Um, okay, so this is one typical example. So many cases can be ruled out by showing that the elliptic curve that arises has rank zero and Okay. Now the K, let us go to another example. Let K equal to five, I equal to two. Then you have the curve X into X plus two into X plus three into X plus four equal to Y squared. Okay, in this case, it is birationally equivalent to this elliptic curve Y squared equal to X cubed plus eight X squared plus 12 X. And this curve has rank one. And the model weil group of uh, this curve is isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2. The non-trivial rational points of F lead to infinitely many solutions. So this is the one curve which produces, produced uh, infinitely many solutions coming from the uh, rational points of this elliptic. So when we consider other cases, like we form elliptic curves, taking three terms at a time, using the values. And in many cases, we have to also use the signs of the coefficients and then check the rank. So let me uh, conclude with the third and the last example, the case k equal to seven and i equal to two. If you remember uh, the, it, the theorem that I stated, this one has exactly one solution. So I want to tell you from where it comes. So this is uh, because in this case, whatever elliptic curves that we can form out of this uh, equation, nothing worked. Okay, so we needed a different treatment. So here is the curve in this case, x plus one, x plus three, x plus four, x plus seven equal to y squared. Okay. And we found one non-trivial solution just by trial and error. We could find this non-trivial solution. And as I said, none of the elliptic curves we could form was useful. The curve has a genus two and it's Jacobian rank is one which is less than the genus. And this allowed us to use the Bhutti method as implemented by Brian and Stoll in Magma. And we found no others. Actually, this was uh, done by Pranabesh Das just two days back. So that cleared this case also. So this is the only solution for this uh, in this. That's all. 
Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, first of all, let's unmute and thank the speaker. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, can you? I, I have one. So ma'am, uh, in, in slide 25, the model variable group should be Z cross Z to cross Z2. It's not Z to cross Z to cross Z2. Uh, Z cross. Yes. Yeah, that's why Wait, we are getting Just the... one thing. Uh, Z, okay. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah. why we are getting infinite many points. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Okay, I think there are no more questions. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um,